What's up, everyone? I want to talk about SEO today. Now, I know that for a large portion of you, I just said, I want to talk about watching paint dry or I want to talk about looking at spreadsheets all day long. SEO can be really boring, but only if you frame it in the wrong light. If SEO seems like this terribly overcomplicated monster that is always changing and is impossible to understand, yeah, then it's going to feel overwhelming and probably not something that you're interested in. But if SEO is something that you can continually work on and will actually produce revenue for your business and you don't need to know everything, you just got to get a little better every single day, well, then it becomes a lot like nutrition or fitness or anything that's good for our bodies. Well, SEO is like that, except it's good for your business. So today I'm going to show you how to do a website audit. Thanks to our friends at AppSumo who are sponsoring this video and the wonderful lifetime deal or Website Auditor, which is a piece of software I use and pay for actually outside of the lifetime deal. It's part of the SEO power suite, but you get this one component in the lifetime deal. I think it's 49 bucks on AppSumo and you get to use this forever on unlimited websites. So you could even use this to drive new clients to your agency if that is your thing. All right, let me show you how to do a website audit. Let's get right into it. All right, this is the Website Auditor website. Now you can go to this website, download the software. It works on Windows, Apple, as well as Linux. You can download it and then start auditing websites without paying a dime. The thing is you won't be able to save the results until you grab a license. So I've got a link down below. You can click that. It does help me out. It gives me a commission if you use my link, but it also helps you out because you can go to AppSumo and get the lifetime deal, meaning that you can audit unlimited websites. You get full use of the software forever, no recurring fees. All right, so go ahead and grab that. I've already got it installed on my computer. So let's start auditing websites. So here's what the software looks like. I've got it running on my Mac right now. I'm gonna hit new here to start a new audit. And the first thing it asks you to do is enter in the website URL. Now, what I'm going to do is actually audit blog.profitabletools.com. Now, I used to have all of my blog posts running on WordPress, but I just recently moved the blog off of WordPress over to the subdomain, and I'm using another CMS there called Ghost. And I really like Ghost. I've talked about it a lot on this channel, but I've done nothing in terms of SEO, so I kind of expect this to be a disaster. We're going to find out together in this video if uh, I need to do some optimization. I'm sure that I do. Now, I'm going to make sure I've got this box checked down here to enable expert options. That's going to enable me to make some more precise settings on the next screen. All right, let's proceed to next. Now we're on step two, and I've got a lot of options to go through because I enabled those expert settings. The first page is all about the robots.txt, which is basically the instructions that your website gives to Google on how to crawl it. And I'm going to have it use the PowerSuite SEO bot for this, but you could choose the Google bot if you want. And the way that the results are interpreted are going to be different depending on which bot you choose. So if you have a news website and you're really worried about ranking on Google News, you might choose the Google bot news. For me, I'm going to stick with the basic PowerSuite bot. We've got some other options here, like this specific user agent. If you're really into web development, you know what a user agent is, but it's basically what the website sees as what browser you're using. So uh, for example, they give down here Mozilla slash 5.0. It could be a Chromium browser. It could be a Safari browser. Those would all be examples of user agents. For now, I'm going to leave that off and just let it use whatever it does by default. And the next option down here is to limit the scan depth. What this is talking about is if you have links that are several layers deep, we can actually say, all right, I just want the top level stuff. Give me nothing more than let's say like three layers deep of links. This is really only applicable if you have a massive website, if you have hundreds of thousands of pages and you don't want this audit to take, you know, the entire day running on your computer, you can limit that scan depth. Now for the site I'm auditing, I'm just going to leave it off because it's not very big at all. The last thing down here I would recommend checking is to search for orphan pages. Now your website's going to have a file on it. Most of the time it's generated automatically or you have an SEO plugin that's doing it. It's called sitemap.xml and it's going to list all of the pages on your website. Well, website auditor is going to look at that file and it's going to find out if there's any pages that were kind of you know, not linked to, they're kind of left alone, they're orphaned, right? And we want to make sure that we find those pages so that we can link internally to them and give some more exposure to those pages. Google likes to see internal links, so we definitely want to highlight those. I'm going to check that box. All right, now I've got a bunch more tabs up here we can go through. This, would, this video would be several hours long if I went through absolutely every setting. So let's just take a bird's eye view. 
On the filtering page here, I can choose which types of pages I want to scan or which pages I want to ignore. So you can check this and enter in like, let's say it was like, you know, slash PHP or WP admin or something like that. I could exclude that. I'm gonna leave all of this off because it's really not necessary. I can just ignore any pages that I don't wanna see on this particular website. But I could also say like, okay, I don't really care about the JavaScript or maybe uh, PDFs that you find. And I could filter those out as well. For now, I think the default settings are gonna be fine and they're probably fine for you as well. The next setting, however, might be important and that is under speed where we can actually limit the number of requests to the website. So this is not magic. It's actually going to visit your website repeatedly going to every single page. And if you've got security software or kind of poor hosting without any caching, this could tax your website. So if you need to slow this down, you could limit it to, you know, a certain number of requests per certain number of seconds. Maybe I want this to be one request per one second. It's just going to visit one page every second. If your website's small, that might be fine. Uh, if it's large, that might mean that you have to set this and leave it over the weekend. Now I've got good hosting, so I'm going to just let this roll and turn any sort of limiting off. We've got the option to execute JavaScript here under the JavaScript filter. If we wanna ignore certain URL parameters, we can do that. This is kind of nerdy stuff. If you know, you know, otherwise you can be fine with the default settings. And then under advanced options, there are some things that might be helpful. Um, one thing that stands out might be if you're developing the site and you've got a password on it, you can actually put the username and password in. That way you can still crawl and look for any errors before you make the site live. Uh, that's a really nice touch. I can also turn on the ability to accept cookies. So if that's required on your website to proceed to actually display certain content, you can allow for cookies with this little checkbox. All right, this is looking good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish. Now we are auditing the website. You can see it's gone to the homepage. It's got a successful result here. And over time, this is just gonna fill up with more and more pages. So I'm gonna let this run and I'll check back in a second. The little counter down here is almost done. I have a pretty small website, so maybe I don't even need to pause the video. All right, my audit is complete. It actually took no time at all and it found over 2,000 pages on my website. Now I know I don't have 2,000 blog posts, so I gotta find out what the heck is going on here. I probably have some duplicate content that I don't need and I'm basically gonna have a task list here for how I can improve my website. So let's get in, let's make some sense of this and uh, figure out what we need to do next. So I'm on the pages section right now and this is essentially just a spreadsheet full of information about every single page on my website. Now, it could be a little bit tedious to say, all right, I'm gonna go through 2000 pages and improve this website. No one really wants to do that, so don't worry. There's also the site audit section, which groups everything together into that task list that I was talking about. So these 17 pages have a 400 status code, which means that there was an error, like the page didn't exist. So particularly what this is, it looks like a bunch of the links that I'm going out to no longer work, or at least they weren't able to load when the, the bot was crawling the website. So I'd wanna go through and check and see, are these links still functioning? And if they're not, I need to replace them with appropriate ones. Now over here, I also have a list of error code 500 pages, which means they were not reachable. So what I did was actually just click on the little icon next to the error message, and it's gonna go back to the website and recrawl those pages. This could have been actually overwhelming the site. Remember I mentioned there was a limiting option. Maybe I should have checked that. Um, it's currently at 45% going through and revisiting these pages to find out if they're really down. They could be broken. They could just be not functional because I did something wrong during the migration. And I'll know that in just a minute. All right, good news. There are no 500 error pages on my website. When it rescanned the website, it got rid of all of those. So just a quick tip, if you run into that, it might've just been overwhelming your host or you might have some security precautions on your website and you just wanna run that again. It's this little icon right here. All right, so I could really just go through this entire list and find all the things that are wrong with my website and start fixing things. But if you wanted to maybe group things together like critical issues, we could click right up here and it's gonna show me all of the errors, the things that are really, really harming my website's reputation or reachability on Google. Now, I already mentioned that I had a bunch of broken links, but I also have some broken images, it looks like here too. So I'll definitely wanna go through, find those broken images and repair them. 
Now it looks like most of the broken images are coming from just a few sources where I might have been embedding those images onto my website. So I'm actually gonna try running this again as well just to make sure that maybe they weren't blocked because they were external links. All right, after rescanning this one, it looks like I unfortunately do have some broken images. I can actually check out the specific pages with the broken images. Right here, I'll just click this button, pulls open that page, and I can go ahead and check and see if there's actually a broken image. And sure enough, there is right here under recut. So this was a link over to their page. It looks like they took down this image. So I'd have to go ahead and edit this page and maybe find another image to go in that place. We're learning stuff already. These are little things, but they are important. You don't want to have any errors showing up when Google's looking at your page. I mean, think about it. It's just kind of a sign that things are unkept if there is a bunch of broken images on your website. The last problem that I have is that four pages have duplicate titles. And so this looks like something I just need to clean up, probably go in and delete one of the duplicate pages, easy peasy, but I can't do it if I don't know it exists. So I really love this part of the auditor because it is a task list, right? It makes it really easy to get stuff done. Now the next step down from error is warning, which is, this is probably bad and you should probably fix it, but uh, it's not necessarily harming you. So I'm gonna turn off the errors and we can just see the warnings here. I've got two big pages, which uh, have huge images on it. It looks like 16.4 megabytes or something on it is really big. I need to figure that out. But yeah, essentially there's a bunch of pages that are really large that I need to find a way to get smaller. And for whatever reason, maybe the images didn't get compressed properly or when I got, they got moved over, they didn't get recompressed. So it's definitely a problem and something that I need to work on solving. So I will add this to my to-do list as well. I've got a bunch of broken links here that I've got to fix. And then I've got some on-page issues. So this is gonna be on-page SEO, some titles that are too long, maybe some pages with empty meta description, quite a few. That was actually what I was suspecting would be the problem because I didn't do anything for SEO yet in terms of uh, setting that up on the site. And then I've got a few pages that actually have meta description that is too long. So here we go. This is probably a solid day's work to go ahead and fix all of these pages, all of these broken links, but uh, it's worth it. There's two more tabs to look at on their site structure. The first one is called visualization, which gives it kind of this weird web look of, of actually how the pages on your website are linked together. It reminds me of Obsidian. They do this with uh, your notes. So you, I don't really find this super useful personally, but if you wanted to look for ways that pages were linked together internally, that can actually be beneficial in terms of improving your SEO. So um, this is the type of screen that you can dig really deep into if you're an SEO nerd. If you're not, you can just look at it and say, oh, that's cool. One way to make this page more useful is to go into the palette here and turn on coloring. This will allow you to quickly see which pages are orphaned. So like this one right here is orphaned, which ones are showing up on your sitemap, and then which ones are indexed by Google. Now, as I mentioned, this is a brand new website, so it's not gonna be indexed by Google at all. But uh, there, I get a lot more information on what's going on with my website when I have that turned on. All right, let's go back over to the pages section because I kind of went through that quickly. There's a lot more important stuff here. We could really make a dedicated video just to this pages screen and everything that you can do with it. Um, there are some presets up here at the top. So let's say you're really concerned about on-page SEO. I can click over here and none of the data is changing. It's just giving me a different view of that data. So it's showing me different columns, things that are important to the topic of on-page SEO. It's still getting that initial data from the audit that we did at the beginning of the video, but now it's got to focus on on-page SEO. Or maybe I want to move over to things like links and technical factors. Okay, now I've got columns that are focused on that. You can add your own presets here if you want. So at the beginning, we looked at all pages. I can add plus over here and then choose the specific columns that I want to show up and then go ahead and have my own custom preset of the factors that are important to me. And you can edit the existing columns as well. You just click over here to these four boxes and we get that same screen. But now we're not making a new preset. We're simply modifying the existing page that we're looking at. So let's say I wanted to add in something like title length. I can click right here. And now next to title, we should see title length show up. If I can actually reorder this. So let's put this right over here next to page, title, title length. There we go. And now it should show up right here when I click OK. All right, there we go. Now I can see how long my titles are. You wanna have the right amount of characters in your title, not too long so that it doesn't look good on the SERPs. Now, after you make a bunch of changes, you're gonna to wanna to come back to this application and then have it go through and scan things again. So you'll go right here where it says rebuild project. 
click here and then it's going to basically go through and rescan your website and you can find out if you've made any progress. Like I said, there really is so much here on this page. I wish we could spend more time on it. I could go over to website tools, have it generate a sitemap for me. I could have it generate a robots.txt file and actually even just upload it. So let's, let's click on one of these. I could have it generate the sitemap and then I could even upload it to the website via FTP if I had access to my site via FTP. If not, I can just download it to my hard drive and then upload it manually. So this is a real powerful professional level tool, but you saw at the beginning how easy it was for me to just get started with a task list of things to do to improve my website, to find the stuff that's broken and to clean it up so that you're not looking like an embarrassment when people visit your website and there's broken images or broken links everywhere. If we move down to the page audit section, this is where you can audit specific pages. So for example, I'm on the keyword map page here and it says this is a place where you can map keywords to their target pages. So you would first enter in a bunch of keywords and then you'd create a map where they actually, you wanna rank for those particular keywords. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for ghost, which is a keyword I would love to rank for. So let me go ahead and add that. No, normally you'd add a bunch here, but I'm just gonna create that one and it's gonna go ahead and create a keyword map. Okay, so then on the next page, you're gonna have a list of all your keywords over here to the left. When you click on one of them, it's gonna pull up relevant pages that you want to try to rank for that particular keyword. You can go ahead and tell SEO PowerSuite or the website auditor that that's an important keyword for you just by clicking on map, and then it's gonna start tracking that particular keyword to that page. We can also see any keywords that you're already ranking for. And this is just a good way to keep track of how your website is actually doing for the things that are important to you. Just like we did a website audit, we could actually audit a particular page. So you can see up here, it's actually auditing this one particular page. I could go ahead and enter in a different URL here and find out how any individual page is doing. It's gonna give me that same list that we saw before of ranking factors and any errors or warnings that are available, but I don't have to scan the entire website. So this is great if you just got one blog post, you're trying to maybe edit for a client and find out if there's any problems with that page. So this is a technical audit. There's also a content audit, which is gonna go ahead and look at the content on the page and find out if you need to improve it. Are you using enough words? Does your title look good? Is there maybe a lack of headings on the page? You get a long list of things that are wrong here, just like we saw before. But once again, this is isolated to a particular page. Now, if you want to, you can even go down to the content editor section and you can start editing your content right here and just go through and improve the blog post. You can see keywords that it's recommending. I gotta admit, I don't really use this part, but I do appreciate that here. It reminds me of a lot of the other content editing SEO tools that I've seen that are online and I've actually reviewed on this channel. So if you don't have anything else available to you, this is really great because it's something and you're at least gonna get a clue about whether or not you are along the right lines. All right, the last thing that I wanna show you is perhaps the most important thing that could affect the bottom line of your business, and that's the ability to generate reports. So this can be a really valuable marketing tool. Let's say you've got a lead. You know, not necessarily that you're like going out and cold emailing people this, but you've got someone who's interested in working with your agency to help grow their online presence. Well, one thing you can do to help get close the deal, bring things a little bit more clear, you can show them exactly what you would change for them. You create a site audit, just like we did in a few steps. You don't have to make any changes. You just go through, make sure that the audit was done correctly, and then go over here to reports. You go to this site audit summary, and you're gonna have a document that you can print off that just says, you know, it's very short and easy to understand. Boom, almost 3,000 issues wrong with your site, sir. You sure you don't wanna fix that, or ma'am? Are you sure you don't want to fix that? You know, we know exactly what to do to solve all this. Sure, you could look it up on ChatGPT. You could probably figure it out, but it might take you weeks. We can do it in a matter of a few days, uh, you know, and then there you go. You got yourself a client. Um, so this is a really, really powerful marketing tool. It's like, oh man, I've got duplicate titles. I've got broken images. Oh boy, that's a lot to take on. And if you really wanna overwhelm people, you can give them the detailed audit, which is many, many pages long here. Maybe you lead with the summary and then if they're like, yeah, I wanna know more, and you whip out the, uh, you know, the stack of papers that shows them every single thing that's going on with their website. I'd probably just stick with the, the summary. I don't know. What do you think?
All right, so that is Website Auditor. It doesn't matter if you are an SEO professional or a complete novice. You can get started auditing websites for yourself or even potential clients and get some real actionable info. If you want to grab this lifetime deal, I've got a link down below. Once again, thanks to AppSumo for sponsoring this video. My name is Dave Swift. I'm around in the comments. If you have any questions or concerns, hit me up down there. I'll be checking it frequently. Otherwise, I've got a newsletter and a community. I'd love to have you on board. Check those links and I will see you in the next one.